So uh, just to give a little background on SMA or spinal muscular atrophy, it's a genetic neuromuscular disease that primarily affects uh, children. And uh, it's caused by a mutation or defect in the survival of motor neuron one gene, SMN1 gene. And it's um, one of the leading uh, rare diseases or uh, it was the leading cause of death in young children. And in the most severe form, uh, children uh, present symptoms by six months of age and many unfortunately pass away by two years of age. And in milder forms, uh, it's primarily a motor um, disorder, even though this gene is expressed in all cells of the body, it seems to primarily affect the motor neurons in the spinal cord the most. And so there uh, results in muscle atrophy and uh, children are unable to sit or walk or um, even, uh, I guess, Stan. And in the last five years, we've been fortunate that we actually have developed effective therapies. And they're just not symptomatic treatments, but they're actually therapeutics that get at the root cause of the disease. So primarily the SMN1 gene that is missing or mutated uh, in the patients. And so um, almost five years ago, so five years ago in December, the first drug for SMA was approved, and that was a Spinraza, uh, and that was developed by Ionis and Biogen. It's a drug that actually <clears throat> acts on a backup gene. So there's a backup gene in humans called SMN2, and uh, this gene makes less of the protein that's essential for the function of, like I said, all cells, but primarily motor neurons in the spinal cord. And so Spinraza, which unfortunately had to be injected directly into the fluid of the spinal cord, so in this, into the CSF and interthecally. So that drug actually um, allowed SMN2, the backup gene, to make more full length protein. And about two years ago, uh, the second therapeutic, which was a gene therapy, was approved and that was developed by Avexis. And in that case, the missing gene itself, SMN1, was replaced. And again, that actually uh, really primarily had to be um, injected into the spinal cord. And so both these um, initial two therapies really were directed uh, primarily at the motor neurons um, <clears throat> that were causing the motor deficits that you see in the disease. So the third drug, that is an oral medication. So it functions in the same way as the first drug. It really affects the backup gene, SMN2, and allows more functional protein to be made. So I, I would say that with those three drugs, um, the different drugs are uh, good and bad for various patients. Obviously, the physician will determine what's best for a particular patient. But I think that's really changed the landscape of SMA. Here, <clears throat> it's one of the, I used to work in neurological diseases uh, such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And people have been working on those in those areas for decades, but there really haven't been effective drugs. Whereas in SMA, we now have three pretty effective drugs. And so I think the focus has now changed to, now that we've stopped de the decline uh, function and or plateaued and stabilized the patient, are there ways to actually increase function? And so the community's kind of turned to focusing on muscle since motor neurons do project to muscle and muscles atrophy or degenerate in, in this disease. So we um, really tried to look at drugs that di directly affect muscle, so that, to build up muscle. And um, I guess the third area that we're really looking at in the last year or so, I think as a community, are really drugs that are regenerative medicine. So trying to rebuild the nervous system or muscle.